There will be four free response questions on the AP Pre-Calculus exam. This practice problem is modeled after FRQ3. Let's pretend it's from the 2000 AP exam. It's mostly about sinusoidal modeling. That means modeling a scenario using a sine function or a cosine function. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The figure shows a pencil sharpener on a level surface. Point B is located at the end of a handle that is two inches from the center of rotation. The handle rotates in a clockwise direction and completes two rotations every second. At time t equals zero seconds, point B is located directly below the center of rotation. The center of rotation is three inches above the level surface on which the pencil sharpener sits. As the handle rotates, the distance between point B and the level surface periodically increases and decreases. The sinusoidal function h models the distance in inches between point B and the level surface as a function of time in seconds. Part A. The graph of h and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points f, g, j, k, and p are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. At time t equals zero seconds, point b is located directly below the center of rotation. In other words, point b begins at its lowest value. So, I need to pick a low point and call it t equals zero. So, I can either pick this point or this point, or I can extend the graph one quarter period to the left and call that input value t equals zero. We will need the period to find the other input values. A period is the duration of one rotation. We are told that the handle completes two rotations every second. But how long is one rotation? We can find that by dividing both sides by two. One rotation will take one half of a second. So that is the period. One full cycle goes from zero to point J. So point J is at one half second. Half of one half is one fourth, so this input value is one fourth. Half of one fourth is one eighth, so that's this input value. The third input value is going to be triple this. In other words, the third input value is three eighths. In fact, this first input value tells us the width of each one of these intervals. So we have one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. This next input value will be five eighths. And this final input value will be six eighths, which reduces to three fourths. Now we have the input values for all five points. How about the output values? The center of rotation is three inches above the level surface. So the midline is at a height of three. Point B is located at the end of a handle that is two inches from the center of rotation. So at its lowest point, point B will be two inches below the center of rotation. In other words, two inches below the midline. And at its highest point, point B will be two inches above the midline. So two inches below the midline will be one inch above the level surface. And two inches above the midline will be five inches above the level surface. So now we have the output values for all five points. Point F has coordinates one fourth comma five. Point G has coordinates 3 eighths, comma 3. Point J has coordinates 1 half, comma 1. Point K has coordinates 5 eighths, 
comma 3, and point P has coordinates 3 fourths comma 5. And that is the end of part A. Part B, the function h can be written in the form h of t is equal to a times the sine of b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of the constants a, b, c, and d. We have memorized that the parent function y equals sine t looks like this. So let's highlight a period of h of t that looks like this. Let's build a model for h of t based on this period of h. Since this period is right side up compared to the parent function, it will have a positive a value. Specifically, the a value will equal the amplitude of the function, the distance between the midline and the highest value. That distance is 2, so the a value is 2. Now it's time to find the b value. But uh, in order to find the b value, we will need to use the period. The b value is given by 2 pi divided by the period. In part a, we found that the period was 1 half of a second. So the b value will be 2 pi divided by 1 half. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So b will equal 2 pi times 2. So therefore b will equal 4 pi. Now it's time for the c value. The c value is the opposite of the phase shift. And the phase shift is the first input value. For this period, the first input value is 1 eighth positive 1 eighth. Therefore, the c value will be the opposite of that, which is negative 1 eighth. That just leaves the d value, which corresponds to the midline. Since the midline is at y equals 3, the d value is positive 3. On the AP exam, an answer box like this will be provided. So, you can either use it to record your answer like this, or you can leave it blank and record your answer like this. Part C, refer to the graph of H in part A. The T coordinate of J is T1, and the T coordinate of K is T2. So this input value is T1, and this input value is T2. C, part one. On the interval from T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? First, let's decide if H is positive or negative on this interval. Here is the portion of H of T from T1 to T2. Look at these output values. They are all between 1 and 3. So the output values are all positive. So we can throw out options C and D which say H is negative. Now we need to decide whether H is increasing or decreasing. Well, H is clearly rising from left to right. So on this interval, H is increasing. So the answer is A. C, part two, describe how the rate of change of H is changing over the interval from T1 to T2. If you have not yet memorized this chart, pause the video and memorize it right now. I recommend that you write this chart on a piece of scratch paper from memory right before you start the AP exam. This is the part of the chart that will allow us to determine how the rate of change is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. The rate of change will be increasing if H of T is concave up and the rate of change will be decreasing if h of t is concave down. h of t is concave up on the interval from t1 to t2. Therefore, the rate of change is increasing. Since they did not ask us to justify our answer or explain our reasoning, it's probably safest to answer with a single word. Just say increasing.
Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.